Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Gift Giving Gnome and I'm going to be sipping on some hot cocoa today and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, deep yellow, fire red, Mars black, burnt umber, which I will call brown, and green oxide. And of course you can switch up those colors as well, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil. And then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush and a number two round synthetic brush. And I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same kind of paint and the pencil and the brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna paint our background. I'm gonna be painting the entire canvas. I'm using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be painting mine with a pale yellow. You could certainly paint yours with whatever color you want, but I'm just looking for something light and neutral that's gonna allow my super adorable gnome to just be the star of the show. So I'm going to be using quite a bit of white and just a little bit of yellow. So I'm gonna just add my yellow a little bit at a time. I'm, you may use all of your yellow. I would reserve some of your white for later because we're gonna to need to um, use that a little bit on um, the hat and a little bit on other parts of, the, of our gnome. So I'm gonna reserve some of my white, but I'm gonna mix the rest of my white into just a really pale yellow. Once you've got it the color that you want, you're really just painting it onto the canvas. There's no special brush stroke. I'm probably gonna use mostly a, a left to right, well maybe, maybe left to right and horizontal brush stroke, but you could certainly make yours, you know, paint it in whatever brush stroke you want. You're gonna get good coverage because we're using a lot of white in the mixture and it'll probably turn a little darker as it dries than it is when it's wet so just as you're you know making your mixture if you want to plan for it just getting turning a little darker as as it dries but you know you can really go with any nice soft color i'm again i'm just going kind of neutral i like to have a nice even coat so you'll see me going back and forth like this just to kind of make sure that i have the same um, quantity of paint throughout that particular layer and because we're using such a light color you're you'll be able to get great coverage on one coat so when you use darker colors or more transparent colors sometimes if you want to have that solid um, look to it then you'll want to do more than one layer but when you're going for a light color like this it's got a lot of opacity in it which is the white where you can't see through it so your success ratio of getting it fully covered with one coat is pretty darn good so just know that you most likely won't have to do a second coat to it but if you find 
you you feel that you want to or you've used a different color that's going to make you want to do a second coat you're more than welcome to and I'm just going solid all the way to the bottom we'll add all of our dimensional pieces with future steps and then we will be using our pencil for the next step so once you've got your background color on here you can put your large brush away wherever you'd like to take out your pencil and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to be doing for the next step is we're going to be doing an outline for our gnome i'm going to be using my pencil and i do want to forewarn you that before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry so this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. It'll make your drawing process much easier if your paint is dry. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to give you a couple of markers. We're going to connect the dots, and then by the time we're done, we'll have this cute little shape of a gnome holding a present sitting down with a big, huge hat on it. So I am going to um, guide you first into the shape of the box, the present, which is going to be a rectangle. So you're going to come up and down your canvas about halfway. Just visually pick your halfway point from the top to the bottom. And then you're going to make a mark about halfway between that and the edge of your canvas. So this is about a quarter of the way into your canvas, about halfway up and down. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the left-hand side. So I'm going to go about halfway between the center of my canvas and the left-hand side, make myself a marker. Then I'm going to come straight down from that about halfway between that marker and the bottom of my canvas, somewhere in through here, make myself a mark, do the same thing over here. So about halfway between here and the bottom of my canvas, make myself a mark. I'm gonna go ahead and connect all four of those dots. It does not have to be a perfect rectangle. The more kind of imperfect it looks, the more organic it's gonna look, and maybe he's squishing the box or something, or the box got tossed around a little bit. So I've got that going on. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a couple of little mittens on the sides. So I'm gonna come down maybe just a quarter of an inch or so and bring myself out a little um, arcing motion for the mitten. I'm going to bring this down maybe a little bit past the halfway point, something like this, and then just bring it in through here a little bit. And you can erase that little bit of a line that the mitten kind of overlaps into. And I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side. So I'm going to come down from the top of my box a little bit, bring myself out this little round kind of mitten something like this this one can be different shaped maybe this one goes up a little bit maybe a little bit higher than that halfway point and then just bring it in in this kind of circular um, area erase that little line in through there and then i'm going to create a couple of cute legs that are coming out the side so I'm gonna come up from here, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch. I'm gonna give myself a diagonal line that's gonna stop maybe about two inches or so from the edge of my canvas. I'm gonna come in here, maybe about two or three inches. And then I'm just gonna give myself the, the leg that um, is gonna be, this line will probably stop right about here. I'm gonna give myself a little foot. So these are gonna be just kind of these cute little square type of shoes. You can certainly make yours into whatever style um, gnome shoes that you would like, but I'm just gonna make mine into these cute little square roundish type of shoe. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over on this left-hand side. And the legs don't even have to be positioned exactly the same. I'm just gonna have a diagonal line coming out here a diagonal line coming out in through here, and then I'll give myself a little shoe coming off, something like this. And the shoes can be at different angles, so they don't have to be exactly the same exact size or shaped exactly alike, because if you're seeing one from the side and one from the bottom, they could certainly take on a little bit different of a shape. So I'm gonna go something like this, and they'll look a whole lot better when we add some dimension to them and some uh, highlights and shadows and all that good stuff. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to give myself a little L or um, gnome nose. <laughs> gnome nose, gnome nose, gnome nose. Okay, got it. Um, I'm going to come in. It's going to take about up about a third of the 
distance of my um, of my box so I'm going to come in maybe about two two and a half inches maybe about two two and a half inches and then up maybe about the same same height so maybe about two two and a half inches and then I'm going to give myself this big huge round shape on to represent my my gnome nose so something like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build my hat on top of this. So my hat, I'm gonna have this big like, kind of like a Santa style hat. Um, it's gonna be really wide in through here with a big poofy um, rim to it. And then it'll get a little bit more narrow as it comes up towards the top. And then I'll have a little piece kind of hanging out over the side here. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna come down my nose a little bit on either side. And I'm gonna give myself the bottom portion of the, um, of the rim of the hat. It's gonna come out to about halfway in my hand. So wherever your hand is, you just kind of bring that line out about halfway. And both sides of the hat can have a little bit more movement to them. So this side, maybe I have this one wiggling a little bit. So it shows that it's cloth and it's got some, some movement to it. And then once I've got that, what I'll do is I'm going to bring up the sides of it. So the one on the right hand side, I'm going to bring this up almost about halfway between here and the top of my canvas. So I'm going to go directly up to maybe about here and in just a little bit and then just kind of connect these two and give myself the exterior shape of this. My pencil went a little awry on me there. <laughs> and then on this side, I'm going to make it shorter than this one. So I'm only going to come up maybe about, I don't know, three inches or so. Just go directly up from here and just, you know, give it as much movement as you want. Something like that. I'm going to connect these two. So for me, I've got mine kind of sloping in a downward motion. And then for the top portion, I'm going to just kind of come up directly from here and maybe in a little bit on the top of my canvas and just bring this down something like this, bringing it almost to, I brought this uh, out just a little bit further so that will show you the, um, that there's a little bit of a poofy edge. So same thing over here, I can bring this in just a little bit from this edge so it makes it look three dimensional. And then I think I'm gonna have this one come in right about in through here. So if this is the center of my canvas, I'm a little bit to the left of that. And then I'm just gonna bring this down and have it meet in with this marker in through here. And then I just need to close off these two areas in through here. So this is gonna be the beard of my gnome. I'm gonna come in from here just a little bit and this is gonna come outside of my box like that. And then same thing over here. I'm gonna come in my hat a little bit and then outside my box and meet my mitten. My beard is also gonna come down in through this area in through here. So I'm going to travel behind my mitten into here. I'm gonna bring it down to my leg. Once I hit my leg, I can give myself this like curved line over the leg like that and then just ripple it as many ripples as you want. I'm gonna bring mine somewhere in this vicinity close to the, to the bottom of my shoe and then I'll do the same thing over on this side. So I bring this down in through here. I'm gonna kind of bring it and drape it over my leg, something like this. And then I don't need to do much ripples on this side but because the beard just kind of lays like this. And if you wanted to for visual purposes, you could certainly erase these little leg lines. You may not need to, but if you, if you feel the need to, you can certainly erase those for a visual purpose. And then I just need the little tip of the hat. So I'm gonna go over from, the, from here to the left, maybe about two inches, make myself a little marker. This is, I'm gonna come over maybe about an inch, inch and a half from here, make myself a little marker. These are gonna come down to a point. I would say somewhere in like this vicinity. I wanna save room for a big pom-pom part, part down there. So I'm gonna just kind of bring this down and through here. And of course, I am making mine with like movement to them so they're not super straight lines. And then I'm gonna give myself this big pom-pom type of fluff at the bottom of that um, part of the hat, bringing it past my little corner of my 
um, rim of my hat in through here. And then you can certainly do any little adjustments or tweaks that you want. We will be using our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can put your pencil away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the base coat for our beard. I'm using my medium brush and I'm just using brown paint. So I've got my beard is all in through this area. So what I'm doing is I'm going to be just kind of painting my um, area with just brown. I'm not really concerned about it looking perfect at this point. We're gonna put a lot of little gray hairs on top of it later, but this brown is gonna provide me with a really nice base to it. You could even at this point bring out a couple of little straggler pieces along the edges. So I'm just bringing it right next to my gnome nose. <laughs> and all the way up into this little area up in through here and then just kind of pulling it down. You can, depending on how thick or thin your brown paint is, if you're seeing a lot of streaks in it at this point, that's totally fine. I don't want you to feel alarmed if um, it's not a solid color. It's not really intended to be a solid color at this point. We're just kind of providing ourselves with a nice base to, to work from. So I'm gonna pull just a couple of little pieces out in through there, bringing it all the way up to my box and my, and my mitten. And then I'll do the same thing down these edges in through here. So just bringing it right up to the mitten, bringing it all the way down and when I and working on this whole area in through here, of course I want that the beard to go right underneath the box, but I also, when I am doing the edge pieces, I don't wanna have like a firm line at the end, so I will be kind of following along these edges, and then when I get to these, to the end over here, I'm going to be doing like little, um, singular pieces along the edge. So it looks like we've got a whole bunch of hair that's just kind of splaying out at the bottom. Maybe it's got a little bit of curl to it. So just getting these sides on here right now. And then when I get down to the edge, I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. Over here, I think I might have a couple pieces coming on the other side of the leg. So I'm gonna pull a couple pieces out that way. And then the rest of it will just kind of lay over the leg in this direction and then they're all all these little pieces of hair will just kind of come together and I'm gonna just kind of at this at this end just make sure that they're not all solid at the end and again we'll be doing additional hair on top of this but leaving these shorter and longer hairs and some of that floor as part of the equation will make it definitely look you know nice and dimensional and have lots of movement to it. I'm going to put a couple of little stray hairs coming out this side over here as well just to you know maybe he didn't brush his beard before he went and tried to open this present or gift this present to somebody and then we're going to use this same brush for the next step so uh, actually we're going to use our large brush for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of your beard on here, you can put your medium brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right. So what I'm going to do for the next step is I'm going to do my base coat for my box. I'm using my large bristle brush and I'm using just green paint. You could certainly use any color that you want. If you want your box to be purple or blue or I don't know pink <laughs> you can make it whatever color you want I am just adding I'm I'm doing mine to represent the holiday season and I always tend to think of red and green as holiday um, colors that I identify with so that's where I'm headed with the colors on my on my box but you could certainly make yours whatever color you want and I'm just bringing it all the way to the edge. I'm not even doing a solid um, application to it. I'm allowing for it to be lighter and darker in some areas. Again, maybe just to show a little bit of dimension. Maybe there's 
I don't know, the wrapping paper isn't smooth. Maybe it's got some ripples and wrinkles in it. So you could, if you wanted yours to be really nice and smooth, you could certainly do multiple layers on it, but I'm just gonna kind of go with it and let happen what's gonna happen with the with the transparency of the paint and let some light areas and some dark areas just naturally create themselves. And then I'm going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your box painted in, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the base coat for our red areas, our red cloth on our hat, which will be this section, this section. We have red mittens and then we have red pants. So I'm using my large brush, my large bristle brush, and I'm just using red paint. <laughs> I'm not gonna do anything special other than color in these areas with red paint. We're gonna be doing um, another step that's going to add all of the dimension and have this looking like it's fluffy and it's got some you know texture to it so don't feel the need to do anything special at this point other than just kind of color it in bring the paint all the way to the um, edges where your pencil is and just make sure that you have kind of a good coat even if it's a little streaky at this point it's totally okay because when we go to do the um, texture on these pieces that will the um the streakiness will be eliminated. So I'm just kind of bringing this out. Mine's gonna be extra fluffy because my bristle brush is not cooperating at the moment. So that's okay. We'll just have some extra fluffy pieces. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do my little hands or my mittens down in through here. So I'm gonna just kind of make sure that I've got it all the way to my green. And I know that these are fluffy mittens, so I don't need to have the edges really clean. I can have them look as if they've got some little texture to them. So I'm just kind of pushing my my paint uh, to those edges and allowing it to have this little fringiness to the edges, but I am making sure that I'm going right to the edge so there's no unpainted area or I'm making sure I cover my pencil mark. Even again, if your pencil mark is still evident, and you can see through your paint and you can still see your pencil mark after this step, that's okay, again, because you're gonna have that future step that will cover up um, those areas. And I'm just bringing this all the way in through here. And I suppose if you wanted to, you could certainly utilize a smaller brush. If this um, big brush was not working out for you, you could certainly utilize a different size brush. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to paint my little pants on in through here so if you bump into your um your beard along the way that's okay because we've got another step on the beard too so <laughs> we plan for these um steps in in a way that if we make mistakes along the way or if we do something that we weren't totally expecting to do that it'll be it'll be all right we can always paint over acrylic paint which is a great a great thing about it and then once you've got this step done we are going to utilize this same brush for the next step but you're going to want to wash it and dry it so i'm just bringing this all the way making sure i've got all of my pants on here because my gnome needs to have some little pants on them and then i'm gonna um wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of these white pieces of the hat. So I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush and I'm gonna be using white and black and I'm just making myself a little bit of a light to medium gray color. So I'm using some white and a teeny tiny bit of black paint to get myself just this medium to light gray color. I think I need a little bit more here so I don't run out. And then once you've got that color and just kind of plan for it's going to get a little darker as it dries so this is about where i'm headed with this and the reason why i'm doing these um, areas with this gray color is because i want them to look nice and fluffy by the time i'm done and i'm utilizing this gray as my base coat so when i put my white on later it will 
use this gray as like a shadow of sorts underneath the white and it'll allow for these sections to look really nice and fluffy. So that's why I do it in kind of a two-step process where I'm using a darker color as the base and then I'll go ahead and use the, the lighter color to make it nice and fluffy looking. So I'm just bringing this all the way to my pencil mark, all the way to my cute little gnome nose. And again, there's really no fancy brush stroke that you have to do at this point. Just getting that entire area colored in is the main goal on this, on this particular step. Just kind of staying where I had those original um, outlines. I'm going to go ahead and do this section as well, bringing it all the way. And again, this is going to be a fluffy piece of the hat, so you don't have to have those edges really clean. I'm kind of wiggling my brush a little. Oh no, there's that song. A little around these edges um, to make sure that I've got that little fluff. And then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got these two areas painted in, you can put this large brush away wherever you'd like to, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the base coat for our nose and our shoes. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna be using yellow, red, white, and black. And what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna create kind of like a skin color for the nose. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of yellow, a little tiny bit of red, and some white paint. And I'm gonna mix it all together until, maybe a little more red than that, and mix it all together until I get what resembles like a peachy skin color to me. You could certainly have yours in whatever kind of color that you would like. We will be doing another step to this nose that will add like a highlight and a shadow and make it look more pinky of sorts. So feel free to um, steer this into whatever kind of color that you would like for this base coat for the nose. So this is kind of where I'm going with mine and it don't worry about it not being perfect at this point because again we will we will add a um, uh, the detail to it in a little bit. So this is just gonna kind of color it in and give us the foundation for um, the excitement that we're gonna put on this cute little nose in a little while. And then when I get the nose done, I will wash and dry my brush and I'm going to be painting my boots are gonna be, or shoes or sneakers or slippers, whatever you wanna call the the, the things on the feet. <laughs> I just wash and dry my brush. I'm just painting them in black right now. So we'll be putting a little highlight on them later, which will give them some dimension. But right now, just painting them in black, they're probably going to look like big blocks or so of sorts at this point, which I'm totally okay with because I know that when I put my, my detail information on them later, it will make them look super cute and have some substance to them but right now just getting the shape on there giving um, a solid color for my base and then once i've got this step done gotta paint this other shoe over here once i've got this done we're going to switch to our large brush so i'm just gonna get this whole thing painted in with some black paint and again, if your shoes are not exactly the same size from one foot to the other, don't worry about that. We'll just pretend like we're seeing them from different angles and it'll be totally fine when you get all the little details on there. And then I'm going to put this medium brush away, take out my large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the shadow underneath our gnome. I'm going to be using my large brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and my background color. So that light yellow color that we had. So my thought process here is I'm just going to add a really kind of deep shadow 
underneath the leg, maybe a little underneath the foot showing that um, there's some light source from above. I'll have some a little underneath the beard, maybe a little in here and a little over here. And then I'm going to turn this surface that it's sitting on a touch darker than the wall or than the background so that way we can see the difference between you know whatever it's sitting on versus the wall so I'm gonna put a teeny bit of black and a teeny bit of brown on my brush at the same time to start this shadow I'm going to be rubbing it right up into the bottom of the leg I'm gonna bring it out underneath my beard. I'm going to put a little bit coming out this right hand side to show that we're maybe seeing a little shadow of that foot. And you can have yours as light or as dark as you want. I do recommend maybe, you know, starting a little bit slow with the with the intensity of it and then if you want it to be darker or more evident as you go along feel free to do so i'm going to put some underneath here you can always use a little bit of water on your brush too in order to um, keep that paint in a um, fluid state so you can kind of move it around as you're deciding where you want it to go picking up just uh, continuing to pick up a little bit of brown and black to give myself a little um, diversity in the shadow but maybe not make it super duper black um, the brown will help to make it a little bit more translucent and again you can add a touch of water onto your brush that'll help you to keep that that paint kind of moving I'm putting a little bit inside this beard too because I think the beard would have these little pieces of shadows here and there so just kind of sporadically sprinkling some in through there gonna bring some out over here so it looks like this foot is casting a shadow upon the surface itself um, I think I might add a little bit more darkness underneath this leg over here so just a touch more black just to make sure we've got a nice good shadow right in through here and of course you can continue to make yours as deep dark shadows as you want or as um, you know light it would theoretically get a little bit darker the closer it is to the object um, so that's why I'm just kind of amping up that darkness in through here a little bit and then I'm going to I just added some water to my brush and I'm wiping it off on my paper towel so I still have some remnants of that black and brown on there and I'm also going to pick up my background color. So with my background color and the remnants, I'm going to turn this ground or the surface that it's sitting on a little bit darker than it than the um, the wall itself. So I don't want to go too too um, dark, but I definitely want it to look a little bit different than that background wall. So if you turn yours to you know if you you know, the, the color isn't what you want it to be. Just keep picking up that background color and introducing or intermingling that in with the, um, with the darker color that you have on there. And that will just get it to really blend and, and make it look nice and natural. You can even bring this little bit of a darker um, color up behind that foot. And, you know, if you need to modify your shadow at all to make it look a little bit more... Um, dramatic you can certainly do that as well and then once you have that done you do any little tweaks that you might um, feel are important and then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our red areas. So I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, red, and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to be um, painting with a stippling technique, which is just dotting. And I'm going to be adding shadows into these areas and coloring the whole thing with some texture and then adding some little highlights. So my shadows are going to go on the bottom side of each one of these sections. So I'll have a shadow here. I'll have a shadow in through here. 
I will also have a little shadow here because in my head this thing goes, the hat goes up and over so to me there'd be a little shadow in through here. I'm going to have shadows at the bottom and on the inside of my mittens, at the bottom of my pants and maybe a little underneath here. Then the main area is going to be the regular reddish kind of color and then wherever I want it to poof out the most I'm going to have light areas. So it'll be like at the top here, over here I'll have some lightness. On the tops of my mittens I'll have some lightness and then maybe on the cuffs of my pants and on the tops of my pants. So how I'm going to start this is I'm going to have brown with a little bit of black on my brush at the same time. I'm going to dot it in my um, shadowy area so very little bit. I'm not pushing hard just kind of utilizing the tip of my brush to get this little bit of a darker area in through there. I'm going to have it in through here as well. I know I still have the, the top to do here so I'm not terribly concerned if I bump into that area a little bit so don't worry about that and I'm just going to kind of dot it in in through here. I will also be blending it into my red in a second but right now I just kind of want to kind of identify where I'm going to have these shadowy type of areas. I'm going to just pull this up just a little bit in through here and I'm not having a solid line where it meets the red red area. I'm just kind of letting it um, kind of blend in a little bit by just um, letting my brush run out of paint towards that red area. I can bring this up maybe a little bit more in through here and then I'm going to reload my the tip of my brush a little bit with that black and brown and I'm going to go ahead and add some to the tip of this little hand in through here get it to kind of blend in with that and I suppose again you could utilize a smaller brush if this you know poses a challenge with the with the size of it but I like these brushes because I like to have that textural look to it right now I'm just adding where I feel there be a shadow in that little um, thumb area going around the the present putting some down at the bottom of this mitten in through here and these little fluffy pieces along the edge that's just gonna add more more dimension for me and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing down at the base of this leg in through here. So right now I'm just kind of working with the remnants on my brush. I'm not, I haven't added much um, since I did those mittens and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing down in through here. Now without washing my brush, I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm going to start picking up red. So because my brush is still dirty, I still have some of that black and brown on it. This is going to allow me a great transition into my lighter areas. So right now I'm just dotting with my dirty brush and red paint on my brush and I'm overlapping it into that shadowy area and I'm bringing it all the way up making sure that I get towards the edges. This is where you can bring it out all the way and get start with that fluffy edge to it making sure I dot the whole area. I'm going to go back and dot this little area up in through here that I missed right here making sure I get it all the way to the edges. Same thing down here just again just taking my red and making sure that it blends in with those dark areas and that I have a nice solid coat throughout the entire um, area. And then once I've got this red on here, this second coat of red, making sure that it blends in with the darkness, I'm going to add my little highlights. So my highlights, I'm going to be using white. I'm not going to wash my brush. If you have a ton of black and brown on your brush right now, I would wash it. But if you don't, if you're okay and you don't have much black and brown, you're just going to pick up a little bit of white with your dirty brush and you can start adding these little highlights into the areas that you feel are going to pop out the most. So not much paint on my brush at all. I'm going to just start adding these little bits of highlights. If I want my hat to puff, puff out in through here, I've got my white on my brush and I start just intermingling it with that red a little bit and letting it kind of blend out or dissipate as it gets farther and farther away from this bright spot that I have created. And you can really steer the volume of these objects by how much 
um, lightness and darkness you put in them. That's going to be um, where you tell the viewer how much fluff there is to it or how much it sticks out. I'm going to go ahead and put some on the mitten. I want the top of the mitten to look like it's right here. So that's where I'm going to put my brightest area is right on the top and then just kind of dot it. And if you struggle with the paint being too wet underneath, if you're not able to get this to um, show up as much as you want, then maybe you need to let that red dry a little bit. But for me, I like kind of working this wet on wet so they blend in with each other in a you know in a nice way so that's going to be your call if you're able to um, work with them wet together or if you have to wait for it to dry and just add add that bit of highlight on top and then i've got my little legs that i want to do so um, for my legs i'm going to add a little bit of a of this appearance of a cuff in through here and then maybe a little bit right on the top of that leg in through there and then same thing over on this side adding a bit of like a little bit of a cuff to the um, to the pants and then maybe a little bit of lightness coming down and showing that it's got light on the top and it's just cascading down here and then we're going to be uh, using the same brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can oh actually let's let's go to our medium brush for the next step so you can put your large brush away take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish our beard i'm going to be using my medium brush the colors i'm using are black brown gray the gray that we use for here and white and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little shadow underneath here maybe some shadows around the nose some shadows underneath the box shadows here and then we'll and some shadows in through here and then we'll add all of the movement for the for the beard so i'm putting black and brown on my brush at the same time i'm going to be putting the black and the brown up in through here and then i just pull it down just a little bit as if it's being um kind of emerging from the underneath that hat i'm going to put a little bit down the side of the nose so that way it alludes to that nose being popped out a little bit so again black and brown is how i am doing this i'm putting the um kind of a wet line where it meets that object and then i'm just going to kind of pull it down in an uneven kind of line i don't want it to be firm down here i'm just kind of pulling down little streaks of it so that way it looks like some of the pieces are popping out a little bit more than others and I'm going to put a little bit of that dark extra darkness right next to the nose as well so that allows that nose to pop out and then I'm going to do the same thing under the mittens and the box so black and brown on my brush going right underneath the hand and just pulling out a few of those pieces so it looks like it's emerging from behind or underneath that hand. Same thing over here, black and brown on my brush, pulling it down so we have those longer streaks coming down. Underneath the box, I've got my black and my brown that I'm gonna wet the center. You don't have to go all the way to the edges. I'm just gonna kind of focus on this center area so it makes it look like it kind of dips in a little bit more in through here. I'm going to reload my brush so I have a little bit more paint on there and then I'm going to bring it down in the direction that I feel that the hair is kind of converging. So if it, the hair is coming this way from here, I'm going to do my directional brush strokes like this and if I feel it's coming over this direction, that's how I'm going to put my, my brush. So I'm reloading my brush with a little bit of brown right now, just so I can get this to fit, you know, get all, as much as I want to. Now what I'm going to do is uh, maybe I'll add a little bit um, of shadow underneath the, the hairline right on these legs too. So it's still black and brown on my brush, making sure I've got a little bit of shadow at these bottom pieces of hair that are are meeting the leg so that are the legs so that way we don't lose that effect that they are on top of the leg in through here and then what I'm going to do is I am going to um, wipe my brush off I'm going to start picking up my brown 
plus a little bit of my gray and this is going to give me some of my lighter pieces of of the beard I will use white in a minute but this is the brown and the gray is just kind of giving me that um, additional kind of layer of dimension I'm going to utilize these colors to start the telling the story of the wave of the hair coming down in through here. I'm not coloring it in 100%. Really what I'm looking to do is just add that dimension to it. So when the viewer is looking at this, they understand that the hair kind of is rippled as it's coming down in through here. When it comes down over this leg, it's got this movement to it. And again, brown and the gray are the colors that I'm utilizing here. Maybe I've got a couple of fun pieces that are just over in this direction and making sure that we've got all of the, the colors represented that I want. Maybe just a little bit more volume in through here with the, with the brown and the gray. And of course, you can have it as you know full as you want to now i'm going to pick up just a tiny bit of white on my dirty brush this is going to give me those extra pieces that are going to um show that there's you know a couple of these pieces of hair have have made their way to the light a little bit more and they're they're just kind of catching catching the highlight from from the surrounding light source whatever that may be maybe it's a holiday tree that is lighting up the area putting a couple of little pieces wherever you want you can have the a couple of light pieces anywhere you want and then we're going to utilize uh the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our nose and our boots. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna be using are red, white, brown, and maybe gray. So I'm gonna do this. I'm going to first make myself a pink color as opposed to the peach one. Now I want some pink. So I'm going to use some of my white with a little bit of my red so I can have a traditional kind of pink color that I will be utilizing as um, a, a nice rosiness to my nose. So once I have that on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I rub it around my nose. You don't have to rub it around the whole thing, um, but I definitely want to get that center area on there. And then I wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some brown paint and I'm going to add a little shadow at the bottom of my nose. And I'm going to get it to kind of creep up the sides of that nose and blend in with that rosiness in the center. So I've got brown down at the bottom. And then what I do is I'm just kind of rubbing it in so it blends in with that pinkiness that we just put on there. And then if you had to or felt that you wanted this shadow to be a little bit more as it's meeting um, the box, you could certainly put a tiny bit of black paint on your brush. And if you wanted to, you could also put a little of the brown around the edges at the top. But what I'm gonna do is I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna put a highlight on the tip. So I'm gonna use white to put a highlight, not at the top, not in the center, but kind of right about here. And I've got a little bit of white. Don't need a lot, so I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel. And I'm gonna get it to blend out to the darker areas. So I want it to be the brightest there, but you can, the, the brightness doesn't just have to be right there in the center. You can certainly get it to blend out. I just picked up some of my original peach color as well. Didn't say I was going to use that, but I wanted it to blend. So I had to pick it back up. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white and I just kind of keep building this until I've got it into that dimensional way that I want. So sometimes it, it might take you a couple of layers to do this. It might take you a couple of tries, but I like to just kind of keep building it in my head. I'm saying, okay, this part pops out the most. So how am I going to achieve that? And I, 
I need that part that I want to pop out the most to be the brightest, but I still want it to all kind of blend in together and make sense so it doesn't just look like a white mark on the tip of my nose. So even when it comes to this area down in through here, it doesn't just have to be a solid color. You can get it to kind of get that roundness to it. If you if your pink was too light, you can certainly, I just picked up a little bit of my pink plus a touch of red. You could certainly get this bottom area to be a little bit darker if you wanted to. So you just kind of keep playing with it until you get that dimensional um, look to it that you want and once you once you've got it you know step away look at it from a distance um, and see if it is everything that you had hoped it would be and then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and hit the boots so my boots are hold on let me just kind of work that out just a tiny bit more <laughs> my boots are gonna be just a little bit of um, a highlight at the top so I'm gonna utilize my gray paint in order to kind of um, separate the side of my shoe and the top. So I'm just taking mine and putting a little bit of um, that gray down the area in through here. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of black as well. So my gray plus a little bit of black just to kind of get this um, to, to make itself look like it's got a side to it and I'm not doing much I'm really just kind of giving the illusion that we're seeing the side of the boot and maybe there's a little bit of a highlighted part where it sticks out the most and to me where it sticks out the most would be maybe the tip of the toe so just adding a little extra bit of um of highlight in through there and then i'll go ahead and do the same on the other foot if you felt like you wanted anything on the sole of the foot you could certainly add a touch of that gray whatever is visually appealing and then i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other foot so gray plus a tiny bit of black is going to allow me to get that shape that i want on the exterior shape showing kind of the side of the shoe and I'm having my boots kind of maybe underneath my pants a little bit. So I've got that shape telling the viewer how, you know, what, um, what's the top and the bottom. And then I'm taking a little bit of extra white and adding this bit of highlight on the part of the shoe that I feel would stick out the most or is the closest to the top. And then we've got your cute little gnome boots or shoes all nice and done. We are going to be utilizing let's say we're going to utilize this same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the base coat for the ribbon on our box so i'm using my medium brush i'm going to use brown and white and i'm just going to be you could use them both on your brush at the same time i'm just pre-mixing myself like a tan kind of color and I'm not even mixing it all the way, so it's got some light spots and some dark spots. And then I'm just going to add my, I'm having my ribbon kind of off center, so I'm going to have it maybe about a half of an inch to an inch wide. I'm just bringing it down to the bottom of my box like this. So I'm going to have a, like a T for the um, base part of the ribbon and you can even bring it down for that extra dimensional little element you can bring it down past the edges of the box that'll make it look like it's got some substance to it um, not the way it wouldn't my mother my mother wouldn't approve of that because she had to have her boxes perfectly ribboned and they had to be all nice and flat but the boxes that I tend to um, put ribbons on are never perfect so they have they have stuff sticking out all over the place so I'm gonna do that one and then I'm gonna go ahead and go across with this one I'm having it a little off center again so this is gonna be coming down a little bit um, and I'm just using this tan color in order to have a nice base for it um, I'm going to be adding the little highlights and shadows later so you can certainly, of course, you could have your ribbon any color you wanted as well. If you wanted yours to be lighter or darker than mine, that total, oops, I had a little bit extra white on my brush on that one. Um, you could have yours any color that you want, but I'm having mine on the wider side. So again, it's about a half of an inch to an inch wide, and I'm just doing this like T 
kind of um, structure for the base and then for the actual bow part I'm going to be utilizing just a couple of um, curved lines and then I'm going to have the ribbons coming down so I'm going to consider this area in through here to be like my center and then I'm going to take that tan color and just give myself a, a loop like that and then I'll have another loop in through this area and then I'll have a couple of little strings coming down like that and then I'll do another one in through here and don't worry about it being perfect at this point because we're going to have those shadows and highlights and all the stuff that's going to make it look nice and special so feel free to just kind of relax and let it be at this point and we're going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step so once you've got your ribbon on here you can put this medium brush away wherever you'd like to take out your large brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish these two white spots on the hat. I'm gonna be using my large brush. I'm gonna be using mostly white paint, but I'll use a little bit of black and brown to add the shadows at below. So I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black and a tiny bit of brown on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna start this process by just putting a little bit down in these bottom areas, similar to how we did the red sections. So we can just get a little bit of that shadow happening at the bottom of these areas. And then what I'll do is I'll start picking up white paint without washing my brush. And I'm gonna start adding the lighter areas. I'm using the stippling technique, which is just the dotting. And this is going to allow these areas of this hat to just look really nice and fluffy and it's going to add a lot of dimensional element to it. And because I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up that hat, my paint is going to get brighter and brighter because I had a remnants of that black and brown on my brush as I started the process down at the bottom portion. And now as I'm going up towards the top with the brighter white, it's going to allow it to be really nice and vibrant. And because I'm using this stippling technique, it's gonna allow for some of that original gray to still show through. So that's what's gonna give it the effect of it being fluffy and having dimension to it. I am cautious about not overdoing the white because if I overdo it, then it's all just going to look like a flat white color. So just making sure that I can kind of maintain still seeing some of that gray underneath will allow this to look as, you know, keep that dimensional look to it. And you could certainly use a little bit of brown in the mixture too. If you're afraid to go too, too white and to lose that dimensional element, you could utilize a little bit of brown throughout the process and that will keep um, those dimensional notes um, from continuing to show. And then when you're really ready to add a lot, a lot of white for some those really bold pops of fluffiness, that's when you use a lot of paint on your brush and just kind of tap it on there, being kind of nice and gentle so you don't, you know, do the entire thing with that white color. And then once you've got your beautiful hat all nice and as fluffy as you want it to be, we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So this, the white is one of those steps you might want to, you know, let it rest for a couple minutes and then see if you want to add any more after it has fully dried. And if you do, go right ahead and do that. Otherwise, you can just put this brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our present. I'm gonna be using my small brush, but you may wanna use a combination of your small or your medium brush, depending on how much work you wanna do on your present. I'm gonna be using green, white, black, maybe my tan color, brown and white um, to complete this. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put a lid on my box. I'm gonna be using green and white paint on my brush at the same time. I'm creating just a lighter, a little bit lighter of a color on the fly on the top of the box. So this way it just looks like maybe it is um, catching some of 
the light and it's got a little bit of a dimensional element to it so just green and white on my brush at the same time and you could even bring the corner of this box out past the um, the footprint of the original uh, rectangle that you did and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing over on this side maybe a little more white on my brush so we can get it to look similar to the other side bringing it out if you have room to do so bringing it out a little bit more than the original footprint and when you're doing this process if you feel that you want to do a second layer anywhere on your box you can certainly do that I might touch a couple of spots in a minute after I get my ribbon on but I'm kind of digging the color that my my paper is right now but I might I might tweak it a little bit but once I've got that cover on there we're gonna put a shadow in a, in a minute but what I first want to do is kind of I'm gonna put my shadow on there and shadows underneath my ribbon as well so I just washed and dried my little brush and I'm putting black paint on it and I'm gonna do an underline underneath this lid so this is gonna give you the illusion of it having um, shadow underneath it and a little bit of dimension to it and m for me my light source is coming from above so I'm having all my shadows kind of underneath and maybe a little bit to one of the sides or another if I feel that I want to, to add that bit so I'm gonna do the same thing that I did for that lid on my ribbon so I'm gonna add a little outline underneath this bottom part and when doing this if you want to have a nice clean line you can add a touch of water to your brush I'm gonna put a little bit of a shadow on the left hand side we're gonna pretend like our um, light source is coming from the right so we'll give a little bit of a shadow over here on the left I think I'm gonna utilize a little brown and black as my shadow underneath here so a little bit of brown and black just to give me a little shadow underneath that one and underneath this one just casting that shadow upon the box I'll put a little shadow underneath my ribbon um, knot of sorts right in through here so this is gonna help to make that a little bit um, more three-dimensional gonna put some little shadows underneath these little ribbons in through here so right now just kind of working on where I want my shadows on you know on the present as well as on my my ribbon itself I'll have this piece of ribbon kind of casting a shadow on top of that piece of ribbon and you can use any combination of brown and or black to uh, accomplish this I think I'm using more of the brown when I'm hitting the um, actual ribbon itself and more black when I'm hitting the present but that again would be a, a preference on your part I'm putting little shadows in these ribbons as if they're kind of crunching um, as they're making their way towards this little center knot part so just pulling a little bit of these dark areas out in through there maybe we've got a little coming out down in through here and then I'm gonna um, wash my brush so I can put some highlights on top of these um, ribbons so washing my brush a little bit of white is where I'm gonna put these beautiful highlights kind of making their way towards the tops of these ribbons I'll do it on my the lid of my present as well towards the top of this little button towards the top of these pieces of the ribbon that are popping out maybe a little bit in through here so when I do these little highlights I am gonna pick up a touch of my um, original color that I used for the ribbon as well so I can get them to blend in a bit but you don't have to blend it in a hundred percent I just want to blend it in a little bit so I can have some sort of dimension to it so I have that lighter part up towards the top and then it kind of blends or fades down into the base color of that of that ribbon and of course you could certainly make yours any color that you want as light or as dark as you want is going to be whatever is visually appealing to you going to put this little highlight on here like there's a little button knot in through there and then just kind of work my way into these ones in through here so I've got kind of a second coat plus a little bit of a highlight that's 
allowing the viewer to understand that it's got a little bit of movement to it and it's got that um, lightness from wherever wherever it's coming from and it's got some good dimension to it and then I'm going to add a little bit of this lightness on the top of these ri this part of the ribbon as well so it tells the viewer that is closer to the the light source wherever that may be so a little bit of white and then my original ribbon color that tan can help to blend it in a little bit and I'm just going to go ahead and blend these in go and do the same thing over on this side and then if you felt like you had any additional areas that you wanted to add color to oh I want to highlight on the top of my on my box I just put a little bit of white paint on my um, on my brush so I can just make sure that that top of the box is nice and illuminated and make sure that it, it closes it off to the hair let's say you you know we're working on your box and you you wanted more green to it you could certainly just kind of put that uh, the um, original green color on your brush and if you wanted to intensify that that original green color a little bit you could certainly just bring it and put a, a second layer on top of it it's not you know mandatory it may you may love your green the way that it is I kind of liked mine the way that it the way that it was but I wanted to show you the the different options that you have so if you if it was a little translucent on you and you wanted to give it more of a solid color you could certainly come back and just add that second little bit of a coat to it and then that will just bring it into that that true color that darker region if you wanted it to be and then we have one tiny little step left to go and it's going to be with our small brush so once you've got your present all nice and perfectly executed or as as well as you want it to be you can wash and dry this small brush let me just put a couple little extra highlights on here wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step all right so we are on to the final step this is the final step of every painting which is to sign it so i normally sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right i think i'm gonna go um bottom left small brush black paint i sign my initials but you could certainly sign your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine it's your painting you sign it however you would like and that is going to conclude this painting i hope you enjoyed the process i hope you painted yourself an adorable festive image and i look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime